students. You saw your feline restraint methods. Now we're going to look at our canine. Uh, we're going to be using Optimus Prime here, star of the show. A lot of these different restraint methods he's never had before probably, so we're going to do what we can to make him feel comfortable. So he has his baby Chewy, his Kong, with peanut butter to keep him nice and happy every so often for being a good boy. She's going to get some positive reinforcement. First thing we're going to look at, stay, is your slip leads, just like the ones at school. Hmm, good boy. Just like the ones at school, we saw the Doberman video with cage aggression. We don't want to make it super small. We want to make it nice and large, right? So these are the ones, stay, where the handle goes through the ring at the end, right? So your handle simply just goes like this. Now you have a slip lead. Always have your hand within this handle. If you don't, we're gonna yell at you because that's a risk. Very simple. So we're gonna make our little slip lead hole, slip it around his head, and pull it behind his ears, and now we have him. You have better control when it's behind the mandible versus when it slips down the neck. If I let it slip down his neck, he's just gonna sit there and pull and pull and pull and it's gonna make him choke. So we have more control yes. when it's right behind his ears. So it fits right here, like in the show dog videos that you see in behavior. Good boy, babe, good boy, good boy. Okay, stay. Now I'm gonna keep that on him because he's gonna want to venture around. He has no idea what we're doing and we're at home. The muzzles we have from class, so if you can get close and see how they need to be applied. The short upper portion goes above the maxilla. The longer portion goes under the mandible to cover that area. We talked about how the mandible is the only bone in the head that's able to move. Stay, babe. He's never been muzzled before, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, we talked about not applying it directly onto their face because that's too much of a um, direct approach and can make some of them nervous. We talked about how a lot of the animals don't care realistically as much as others, and they'd be okay with it. Optimus would probably be okay with it, but normally we want to go behind their head and do the swift motion. So the way he's positioned, no one's holding him with a towel or anything for me to be able to muzzle him that way that well. Um, so I can try, but otherwise I'm pretty confident he'd let me put it on directly. All right, babe, stay. Slip it on over. Slip it on over, leave it, stay. Buckles behind his head, nope. And now it's on. We make sure it's nice and snug, and we're good. Very simple. I'm gonna take it off because he's gonna stress out. Okay, 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 good boy, stay, stay. It's okay. Good boy, good boy. The gauze muzzle, y'all are gonna have to practice that watching the videos from class that I have sent you. Um, Optimus does not do well with the guy's muzzle, plus he doesn't need it, so I'm not going to apply it to him. It'll be better practice anyway to do it from class. Videos on the stuffed animal, which we're going to do this week. Stay. Now he's in sternal recumbency, so we can use this position to acquire blood from either his cephalic limbs, what, cephalic veins, whether it's his right forelimb or his left, but also from his jugular vein if we were on a table, which we're not going to do right now. So we're gonna do our sitting jugular vein. Optimus up. Come here. So we're gonna walk him into a corner. Come on. Sit. Come here. Sit. Come here. Optimus here. Come here. Sit. He's pretty close. He's pretty close. Come over here. Sit. Oh, is it? We're gonna use the door. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. So with this one, realistically, he needs to be in this corner here but he doesn't understand what's going on. He's being a good boy in class, it'll be easier. So this way, whoever's restrained for jugular venipuncture will hold their mouth like this. The person who's performing venipuncture will be seated on the floor in front of them or kneeling and hold off, so occlude the jugular vein of choice whether it's right or left at the thoracic inlet, which we know is right here. The little divots, like the ones we looked at on ourselves here and here in class, to perform venipuncture. But they must hold their mouth shut Sometimes they like it, sometimes they don't, but he'll do pretty well over, overall um, if we're not in the house and he doesn't hear cha-cha and bumblebee. Good boy. Let me see, stay, stay. So this would work, my thighs are securing his body so he's not gonna try and fall out of place. No, sir, stay. The person performing will hold off and occlude and the jugular vein will make its presence known. 
Good boy. Good boy. Remember we gotta check uh -uh. our gums. We're gonna check our tongue, making sure they're nice and pink and they're not turning a blue or purplish tint. Good boy, Optimus, good boy. Positive reinforcement. Dad needs to put more peanut butter in there, doesn't he? Come here. All right, so the forklift method we talked about, um, how we use that a lot in class. Y'all are not rubbing peanut butter on the walls in class. It's something I will do at home. Uh, we'll have other means of distraction. So I'm gonna forklift him while he's distracted. Here, come, here, here. So I'm slowly gonna insert one arm under his inguinal area. So in front of his thighs, my other arm around his neck. And notice where my knees are. They are not under his body like this. And we talked about in class, they use our thighs as leverage and push off of us. We don't do this. It's not smart and it can be dangerous. So our legs go behind where our body actually is positioned. Shh, shh, shh. I'm not choking him. He's just excited. This is how he is. Look away. Stay. So I have him here. We use this method for exams, vinny puncture. Um, over lateral saphenous veins when standing, for those of us who like to use that, that form of any puncture. Um, ocular exams, oral exams, anal gland expressions, ear cleanings, all types of good stuff we're gonna do next term. So this is forklift. Lamb hold, I can't really do with him because he's not a small to medium sized dog. That's to pick our dogs up. I can show you the motions without picking him up. So lamb hold, you have one arm. Let me trade arms real quick. Good boy, you stay. You stay. One arm goes behind their back end, put their thighs, and we scoop in like an ice cream cone. <laughs> it's a big burp from a big boy. Our other arm goes around their neck, and we hold them. And we scoop, and we pick up with our legs, not our back. Calm down. Yep. That's just him. That's not me. Remember, he has one unique lung and one really good lung, so he's different. He's a good boy. Down. Hey, okay. lay down. Or sit. Take a break. Stay, stay. Now we can also do our seated version of our cephalic vinny puncture. So if I'm on this side of his body, I'm gonna have to occlude this particular cephalic vein on his right side, not his left. So we're not gonna be doing this because look how much space I have between me and him. This is not smart, it's not gonna work out well. It never will. So I can position myself around him. And still hold his neck. Good boy. My body's around his body, so I don't give him excess space between us. That way he doesn't take advantage of that and try and walk away to go eat or whatever it is he wants to do. So cephalic vein, someone can pick up his paw. Can you pick up his paw for me at the same time? Cameraman showing his skills. Good boy, babe. Pick up his paw. There you go. And I can occlude, well, you are using your thumb, Pull it towards your knees. I can include the vessel as you see, lock it in place. So he, Optimus can't pull his arm back and he can perform vinny, vinny puncture. Let go. Thank you. So overall, he's a pretty good boy. He's a pretty good boy. Oh, thank you so much. All right. Now, getting him in sternal recumbency is something that's gonna be really difficult without two people. Um, we do sternal recumbency with the large dogs as well. Good boy, so he'll lay down for us a lot of the time and it'll be real easy this way. But on a table, we'll do this. But you have to picture us on the table. Sometimes we'll do this on the floor and practice for vinny puncture, but it's not um, something y'all are really gonna be doing in class. Y'all are gonna be doing the alternative methods that we utilize from the textbook. But this one, I can do the same thing with his cephalic vein. When someone's holding that paw, I can still insert my occlusion here and they can pull his paw out and his body would stay straight because I have my forearm here because we talked about how our forearms are best friend as well as my body is on this side of his body. Good boy. Now for the fun one. <laughs> Lateral recumbency. Come here, babe. Come here. Move. He likes his blankets, so I brought him his blankets to see how he'll do for us. Come here, dude. Okay. Move. Move, son. He thinks he's going on a W-A-L-K, -okay, don't say anything, because he's totally not. You want that? You want to wear a muscle? Oh, you don't need it. You don't need it. But I don't know how he's going to tolerate this, so this is going to be interesting to see. Come here. Stand. 
So if he's going to be in a standing position, right? So to place him in left lateral recumbency, he is facing the way he's supposed to. He's going to face that direction. Left side goes on the floor, right? So to do this type of recumbency, I have to grab, give me this, this limb over here, his hind limb, his left hind limb closest to my body, and his left forelimb closest to my body to lay him down. And hopefully with these blankets, it won't pose a problem. Stop moving around, son. A lot of animals will stand there for you. He will not. Optimus loves to move around. No, 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 don't lay down. <laughs> Optimus, come here, get up. Stop, son. Stand up. Okay. Stay. No, you stay. You need to listen. Stay. We have to be weary of their head. So I'm gonna grab his legs, lift them up, slowly slide him down my body. Don't let his head hit the floor. On the floor we go. And we are in lateral recumbency. Good boy, stay. Good boy. Now I keep hold of both of his left limbs, right, I'm sorry, his rear and his forelimb, otherwise he's gonna try and get up. But look what I'm doing to his limbs, I'm holding. They're, they're elevated slightly. Because if they're not, Optimus will try and stand up. He'll roll straight out of this grass towards you, towards the camera, and he'll try and stand. I keep these legs elevated. He cannot get up. He'll stay right here. My right arm is putting pressure on his hind limb area, so around his pelvis. My left arm has his neck secure. I am not occluding his neck all the way down. I'm not applying too much pressure to where he can't breathe. Optimus can breathe just fine. But if he tries to sit up, I have consistent pressure and he'll just do this number and lay back down. Good boy. Now, if he stays, I can show you his occlusion vein. So sometimes, like with Optimus being such a good boy, we can use this method and occlude our left lateral saphenous vein, or excuse me, right lateral saphenous vein at this moment for our venipuncturist. If he starts moving too much like Bumblebee would, hence why we're not using him, you'll need a third person. So you'll need one person to hold your animal in this position, another person to include this vessel, and then of course your venipuncturist. So let's see if he lets us. Come take a peek at his vein. You stay. You're being a good boy. You can talk to your patients just like I talked to Optimus. Um, a lot of patients tend to do really well when we talk to them in this way, even though we're not their owners. So his front paw, if you take a peek here, his front paw, it stays as is. It does not lay down. I keep it elevated slightly. I'm not hurting his arm or his shoulder on that opposite side. I still have my pressure on his neck. You stay. I grab his leg over here. So I'm grabbing his right rear. I'm going to include the vessel. So this is his stifle. So that's where his patella, his tibia, and his femur meet to form the knee, roughly speaking. So I'm gonna grab around that area the best of my abilities, his little chicken thigh. The venipuncturist can pick up his paw. Will you pick up his paw, please? And just hold it, stay, babe. And keep it parallel to the floor. And there's your vein right there. Can you see the vein? It's pretty visible. So that's his right lateral saphenous vein. So right here. We can use this to perform venipuncture on, to administer intravenous medications, apply intravenous or IV catheter if we wanted to but I have to maintain consistent pressure on occluding this vessel with my hand. So I'm holding it just right. My finger here is just out of the way. It can't really fit anywhere. So it just rests here and yours can too, and that's totally fine. Um, or if you need both hands, you can hold this way, that's fine too. But this is that vessel that we were talking about in class that works really well whenever we have animals that have anxiety or PTSD. Um, I mentioned to y'all, that's my vein of choice, so I'm away from their face. I don't have to be near their face to perform on their cephalic veins, whether it's right or left. I don't have to be near their face to perform right or left jugular venipuncture either. Now, it's not always going to be accessible, dependent on how much they weigh, if they have an issue in that rear limb that's sensitive, of course we're not going to use those vessels. Good boy. Look how good he's being. I'm so proud of him. He's going to get so many good treats. So we hold him, as you see, he doesn't get up, but I can let him up from here if he wants to. Good boy, babe, good boy. You deserve some goodies. And when your babies, so your patients at school, 
When they are being really good for these types of movements and overall positions, we're gonna give them positive reinforcement like I'm giving him. Obviously, he doesn't get it the whole time because that would be pointless. And we can't have them when I'm eating anything when we're doing jugular vinipuncture to begin with or lying down in right or left lateral recumbency because then those concerns are gonna aspirate. So whatever they're eating goes into their lungs instead of to their stomach. And that's a huge problem. Let me see. Good boy. Stand up. Come here. Come sit. 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 Are you going to lay down? Of course you are. All right, y'all. So I hope this helps. Um, I know it's a little different because he's on the floor and he's not on a table like we're going to be with our other animals. But keep in mind when we do use our larger breeds like he is, even though he's about 53 pounds or so, it's still diff difficult sometimes when you're learning. So we're going to stay on the floor with the larger ones. Remember when we're in forklift method, like I showed you when he was licking the peanut butter off the wall, we can put him on the wall and use that to our abilities. Come here, Altus. Come right here. Set. Stay. And I can hold him, as you see, and not let him lie down. He's not going to be able to get out of this. The wall is going to help me to hold him. Now, sometimes you're going to smack your head, and that's okay, because you can rest your head on the wall as well, like I do. But look at my knees. My knees are still not under his body. A lot of y'all are going to be trying this. This is not going to work. It's dangerous, as we talked about. An optimist can just step all over me and get out of my grasp, as you saw. But I hope this helps, guys. I will see y'all this week, and we're going to do awesome. Please practice with your demo animals and get prepared. Uh, we'll go over your lab expectations, and everything will work out great. I'm going to sit. Say bye-bye. Give me a kiss. Mm. See you later.